and welcome back to another episode. Today my guest is Victoria Maiti from AT Events and we are going to be talking about something I would say pretty brand new, wouldn't you agree Victoria? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about event psychology. So a few things that we're going to cover is what exactly is event psychology and why is it important to you as an event planner? Also, what are the benefits of event psychology, not just to you, but also to your event attendees? And Victoria is also going to share three hacks around event psychology that will improve your events. So this is a must-watch episode for all event planners, no matter what stage you are at. Um, and with that, I do want to introduce the expert in this field, Victoria Maiti. Thank you so much for being here with us. My pleasure. So first of all, what exactly is event psychology? Because this isn't something that is um, talked about or, you know, it's pretty new, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty new and it's fresh and um, it's exciting new area of knowledge which I would like uh, more event planners to know about. Mm -hmm. And event psychology is, in short, it's um, applying science findings to event planning. So basically, and when I use uh, term event psychology and I use that uh, as a hashtag on my social media to indicate materials that are relevant um, uh, for event planners and um, you know, important for event planners to know about. And um, it is, um, uh, it is uh, a sort of a common term uh, which indicates findings from a range of sciences like psychology, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, neuromarketing, um, social psychology, and uh, a bunch of others as well. Uh, and those findings can be applied to improve event design. And I use term event psychology just for the sake of simplicity, but you should um, note that it's actually um, findings from a range of sciences that can be applied to improve the event planning process and to improve the quality of the event. And um, so, Let's start by just talking and, and I will explain why actually it is important to, uh, to apply science to events. Um, in fact, you know, we all know that um, events are people's business. So it's all about how uh, people learn, how they behave, how they communicate, how they make decisions and how they feel when they are at the event. And, um, Basically, those things like communication or interaction between people or learning or emotions that we feel at the moment when we are on site, um, it's all at the heart of the event, of any event. And at the same time, those things like learning, communications and emotions are um, products of our mind. And this is very um, simple explanation, very short and simple explanation for why psychology should be at the heart of any event design too. So we do, or event planners um, try their best to provide event entities with great experiences. And we integrate a lot of event technologies, we um, create new formats, we pay attention to details, but actually, all of the things, they are um, on the surface, while a lot that really matters is actually hidden and happening inside of our mind. And um, that's why it is important to use the knowledge and findings that uh, science provides to us. Um, and. Um, for example, do we know how adults learn or what makes communication easier between people or what creates positive experience and how, how do people actually choose one particular event and what makes them buy a ticket and what makes them come back to one event and not to another. And all of these things um, can be explained and can be improved with the help of a science. So um, let's- like uh, really data-driven. 
<laughs> sort of, yes. I mean, it's basically, yeah. Uh, what I do when I um, uh, speak about event psychology or when I um, uh, do the uh, education session on event psychology, I, I take the research and I analyze it and I, you know, read a lot of uh, specific subject because, you know, it's not sometimes it's not straightforward and there are different scientists that talk about the matter from different perspectives so you need to actually read through it and understand what it is about and then when i'll analyze a specific issue and apply that to event context and translate those findings uh, to event planners and say okay so we can take uh, those um, findings and implemented in the following way and um, let's let's uh, let's take an example that would be easier just uh, for example there is a, a concept called a paradox of choice in an infamous study by uh, scientist uh, Sheena Iyengar and her colleague they offered participants um, six uh, to choose from six types of jam and in another study it was 24 types of chocolate and um sounds delicious already oh yeah 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 and uh, <laughs> i mean they, prob <laughs> they, they were enjoying i think <laughs> yeah so um and what they found what uh, the, the results from lab and field studies have shown that with larger assortment people felt discomfort and difficulties when choosing with fewer options um, 30% uh, led to purchase. Right. While they were offered 24 options, only 3% led to purchase. So there was, I'm sorry, there was a 30% increase in purchase you know, with a fewer option, mm -hmm. uh, fewer options. So um, how does that relate to event planning? And um, it's pretty straightforward because uh, we all know that um, event planners try to create uh, agendas with a lot of education sessions and a lot of activities that we catered, you know, to different needs. And generally, we think the more the better. And now, when we get to know the paradox of choice concept, which is proved by this science and is proved by different, um, you know, experiments, we can consider that when putting together our program and actually say, okay, well, the more maybe is not the better. So in this case, we, we would need to think about how to create that balance when putting together a, an agenda. So is well, there, sorry to interrupt you, but is there an optimal number? Like you gave, you know, the example of six jams, 24 chocolates, um, but is there an optimal number? Because I remember, you know, when, I mean, this is many years ago where it was like, give people three options, they're gonna choose one. Oh yeah, three is a magical number actually. That's why, you know, when we talk about something in many presentations, you would you would see three bullet points for, you know, as the outcomes for something. Right. No, but there is no, in this case, it's, uh, there is no that magical number of choice because that would depend on the type of the audience, you know, mm -hmm. on the type of the event and on the actual content that you offer or a, you know, a, a program of activities that you offer. Uh, it just, you know, uh, what what I notice, and I'm sure you also can relate to that. That uh, in 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 many cases, event planners offer um, really like you know um, uh, many 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 education sessions uh, packed into you know one one day, for example, right? And um, that can be explained, you know. Um, by, by different uh, reasons and by different factors. But uh, in fact, we need to always remember that there should be some balance and sometimes we should eliminate uh, the, you know, um, and remove those um, options just for the sake of uh, for the sake of our participants, because in this case, we make them feel worse because they have to choose and they have to think about if their choice was right. And that means cognitive load. And you know, that 
that means distress that they feel on a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So they even do not realize they actually feel that because there are so many options. Um, so that all is happening and is, you know, on the inside level. Right. So when let's, cause I'm, I, I feel like, um, and maybe I'm, I'm speaking for the event planners watching this, you know, especially the ones who are planning multi-day conferences or larger events and they already have so much on their plate. Right. And they think, Oh, now I have to think about event psychology and like, you know, giving them the optimal number when we don't even know what that number is, you know, cause that has to be tested by the sounds of it. So is that, that's where you come in, I assume. Right. Like oh yeah, absolutely. You come in as a consultant for the event planner. It's not something that they need to take over. Yes, that's that's right. So uh, we can work together and actually identify those points where we need to improve and how we can, you know, do that better for this specific event because. It, Every event is unique, so you need to work on a specific case, uh, taking into account specific factors that actually, you know, true for that specific event. And that's, yeah, exactly where I right. come in and, yeah, just help out. Got it. Okay. I just wanted to clear that up because I feel like sure. people yes. are watching and they're like, yeah. wait, like, I don't have enough time to do more. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why, you know, uh, and maybe, you know, um, we, we can talk about it later as well, but this is the benefit of applying event psychology. It does require the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't require a lot of, um, you know, time or cost involved. So that is one of the benefits uh, of applying science to events. But you, you do need to get aware of different, you know, um, hacks and tricks yeah. and ways and tools. So, and that's where I can help. Uh, you know, come in and help with that knowledge. Yeah. So, well, you already brought it up. Let's let's segue there. What are some of the other benefits to not just the mm -hmm. event planners, but also the event attendees? Right. Well, um, first of all, uh, when you are aware of different methods, uh, science-based methods, you uh, are more... Um, you are more inclined to uh, sort of um, uh, to be more efficient during if, if we are talking about attending events uh, you are more efficient when you are attend uh, events because you understand how it works how people communicate and so how can you behave to your advantage to your benefits for example how you um, socialize how you network during the event for example or how you learn so because you know for example specific tools that makes uh makes your brain work better during learning new piece of information right for the event planners as i said you know it's uh first of all it's cost and effort efficient because it doesn't require huge costs and it doesn't imply any you know huge efforts um to to apply those tools and uh in most cases these are very very simple ways uh, so just one more example let's say you know there are uh, there is a lot of evidence uh, from neuroscience studies about uh, walking that is a you know very efficient way uh, to improve a human's cognitive functions mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we, we know that from the neuroscience studies and we just actually apply that, uh, for example, we can do a, a wellness session or a walking session, educational session on the go, right? So in this case, um, and the, the walking as proved by the science improves our creativity, productivity, and um, um, decision-making. So when we do this new format, for example, a walking session, we create new format and we get happy attendees which ha who have some you know, exercise and uh, improved decision making. And uh, again, they actually probably do not, most likely they do not feel like, oh, this is because I had some walking session. So on the subconscious level, they feel more satisfied, more, um, you know, um, uh, just more happy 
mm -hmm. uh, because it improves mood as well. And then we get happy attendees uh, and we get increased satisfaction from the, uh, from the particular experience. So, um, I mean, that, this is very simple to implement. It just requires that knowledge uh, right. that, you know, working right. particularly um, is, is good. Um, so um, simple, cost efficient, and um, effort efficient. And um, for the, um, as I said, for the uh, attendees, uh, those ways and tools um, create a benefit because they know how to do it right, how to improve their behavior, their decision making, their learning at the events. Okay, I you know, it's it's such an interesting topic, and um, I, honestly, you guys, like before I talked to Victoria, I didn't even know this existed. Um, I mean, on on some level, you kind of realize that it is important, but I didn't realize that it was like you, you know you could hire consultants and everything. So I feel like I could I could ask questions and questions for days and days and days. Um, but but that's not the point. If you guys have questions, then please put them down below, and we will monitor those and get back to you too. Um, Absolutely. So let's talk about so we've talked about a little bit about you know what it is and the benefits not just to the event planners but also the event attendees um, you did give one example of you know the walking or some sort of wellness experience um, you know and and I actually have talked about this particular subject with uh, with other event organizers too, you know, just to get people kind of moving around, you know, um, it makes them more alert and they're more inclined to learn, especially if you're at some sort of conference, so you have speakers and so forth or, or a learning session or something like that. But let's talk about some of the hacks around event psychology. So you've got three hacks that you're going to share with us. Yes. Um, I'm sure there are a ton more. But Absolutely. Let's, just, let's start with three. Yeah. Um, and then we'll yeah. go from there. So what are the three hacks that you're going to share with us today? Um, yeah. Let's Let's say it's my my three of my favorite, and um, the reason uh, another reason why I actually would like to share them is that they are very very simple to implement, and they are very very efficient at the same time. So the first hack is about learning because again, as I said, you know, um, and we all know that learning is one of the top reasons to attend uh, a business event, and. Um, for you for uh, for learning to be efficient even more efficient uh you need this hack based on science and um, uh, it is that uh, you need to reserve 10 minutes of rest for your uh, event participants after each educational activity so um mm -hmm. 10? 10 minutes, yes, okay. 10 minutes. Um, the researchers from Harriet Watt University did an experiment in um, 2018 in which they showed that having this only 10 minutes of rest after learning new piece of information results in more detailed and more long-lasting memories of that experience and that um, learning that new information. So make sure uh, that you have 10 minutes of rest for your participants every time they learn something new and make sure that your speakers and you know members of your team remind participants about the necessity and, port and importance of having this 10 minutes of rest because this results in them remembering learning and remembering new information better right. and that's that leads to actually more satisfaction with the learning at the event so and what does the rest look like like is it like where you actually just kind of say yeah almost like kids you know it's sleep time or nap time or really it can be it can be so yeah the rest can be you know nap time yeah absolutely uh the re it can be switch to another activity hmm. anything basically okay. Okay. and um it can be doing nothing right. literally like just sitting and just thinking through you know what you have learned what we have heard and um putting it down for example there might be different ways around it but um basically it should be you know this 10 minute gap in between uh let's say sessions because if it's back to back then our brain just doesn't you know they don't work that way so it just doesn't 
um, it doesn't hold the information. Right. Yeah. To put it simple. So we just forget or we forget, uh, you know, most of it and we, we can't just hold um, what is actually important to us. And we, can, we can't reflect on the, on the new information and therefore the memory of it would be different. So that's how it works. Got it, okay. So that's the first hack. Yeah. Um, the second hack is about audio tools. So we usually rely on vision and on video because it is considered to be a very powerful tool for engagement, for example, right? And that's, while that's understandable, the science says that audio tools are more powerful than video. In, um, um, there was one experiment uh, done by the researchers from the University of Toronto in which they identified um, equivalent audiobooks and film scenes from the adaptations such as Game of Thrones and Silence of the Lambs. And what they did, they selected emotionally charged um, um, scenes, uh, you know, that were equivalent in audio and video segments, and they um, measured participants' heart rate, skin conductance, and temperature. And they also asked participants themselves to rate their experiences after each exposure. So the interesting bit from that research was that while the participants themselves rated video segments as on average 15% more engaging, uh, more engaging uh, their physiological measurements told otherwise. When they were listening to audiobooks, their heartbeat was two beats per minute higher. Uh, their skin reaction was higher too, and they were two degrees warmer. So the researchers made a conclusion that the auditory format is more cognitively and emotionally engaging. So if you're an event planner and you're putting up, uh, putting together um, a program and different activity activities, make sure that you place more focus not on video but on audio tools and the hack is in using uh, audio tools more often and in more creative ways like you can use um, podcasts you can use um, music in in various ways which is a powerful music is a powerful tool to create atmosphere to improve learning and to engage so that's that's the hack number two nice <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, that's um, uh, the, 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 this experiment is fascinating. I mean, because people just do not realize actually yeah. uh, how powerful audio can be. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, it gets your imagination going as well, right? So I can Absolutely. see Absolutely. Yeah. Well, those reactions. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm not going in, into details for now because, you know, uh, yeah, it, you can find the, the explanation and there are reasons behind that, obviously. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, it's just amazing how it works and we actually do not notice that you know, uh, consciously. Yeah. So, well, especially yeah. with the two but examples yeah. that you gave, the two, well, the series and the movie, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. no thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can already yeah. feel my skin getting warmer. <laughs> I'm like, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's true. Um, and and um, and the number three hack is about feedback. So we all know that feedback is essential. It's actually uh, important to both parties. So for the event planners, it's a chance to improve and to develop the, um, the um, event design and to make some corrections and changes to the benefit of their participants. And for the event participants, it's a chance to contribute to the um, you know development of the event and to be and to feel part of the community of the event community right but um, the, the challenge as we all know is that it's really hard to get um, you know um, detailed feedback and um, in most cases it's vague and it's um, not informative and it's very um, um, it, some, in many cases, I, I think, you know, um, it's, um, it's a small number of responses as well, or no response at all, right? So you need to be lucky to get the honest, comprehensive, detailed feedback. 
yet science gives us very, very simple solution. Um, instead of asking, and, it, and this is the hack number three, instead of asking for feedback, ask for advice. And nice. how does like it work? Change in perspective. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the researchers from Harvard Business School did a series of experiments about what happens when you ask for advice versus what happens when you ask for feedback. And when you ask for advice, um, uh, it signals two things. First is that you're competent and yeah serious in whatever you do and second is that you treat those you ask that advice from on the same level so you okay. treat you consider your participants being knowledgeable yeah. and competent and people love generally love being acknowledged as you know experts and they um in this case they get uh to be more willing to provide you with uh, you know, honest and comprehensive and constructive feedback. So you don't need to be lucky. You just use this hack and you will get, uh, you know, comprehensive feedback uh, on your event. That so sounds like a hack. really easy change as well. It's, Absolutely. It's important, right? It's like just one word. one word. Can you imagine <laughs> that? Can you imagine? Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. So you I like just... That a lot. You just switch to, you know, to um, different language, use just one different word and you get different results. And again, it is proved by the science. It's not something that you just, you know, may make up and yeah. you, you hope that yeah. it will work. It will because, you know, it was tested and yeah. I'm actually going to do that. We have surveys that we send out to, and I'm, I'm Absolutely. definitely, I'm after this, I'm going back to all those surveys and changing it up, <laughs> changing that right. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Good. love testing things. Good. <laughs> See it doesn't work, so right up Good. my alley. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so, Victoria, let's talk about the key takeaways from today's topic because I know that, like I said earlier, we could we could probably talk about this for hours, if not days. Um, and there's so many different um, studies that are being done. And yes, it is newer to event planning. But the concept isn't necessarily new, right? So right. There's, there's a lot of research out there. But regardless, let's wrap this up. Let's talk about the key takeaways for everyone watching this. Um, and then we're going to go from there. <laughs> right. Okay, well, as you said, you know, it's uh, not necessarily something that we haven't practiced before. So we might, by intuition, we, we may actually apply some of the things. Mm -hmm. But um, when you get to know it, uh, and when you get to apply the findings specifically, uh, you know, consciously being aware of the results or possible results, then you get to improve on those nuances and those, uh, you know, small details that actually matter. So by applying psychology to event design, you get to improve the quality of the event mm -hmm. and you, um, you you will receive um you know that um let let me put it this way uh there is a lot of competition on the market at the moment and uh, we have a lot of tools we try you know different ways about engaging our audience and making you know an impact and um uh, if we if we look at events at, at scale you know we try to contribute and make events that actually develop uh, contribute to uh, social and ec economic development right and uh, the ultimate tool actually to impact experiences and to provide attendees with great experience is to act on that uh, below the surface level. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, you, um, if you use event psychology tools, which are proved and tested and actually give some results that you, in this case, you get to improve the quality of events for the benefit of yourself, your business yeah. and your attendees. Yeah, great. And yeah. again, as I said, you know, these are tools that are cost efficient uh, and um, they do not require a lot of efforts. All they require is knowledge. So right. you but need the, to know about the benefit them. benefit for the event planner and the event itself could be, um, could be really great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. results are outstanding. To stand out and to, you know, outperform your competition, 
you need to know how to apply science to events. Yeah, well, and a couple of words that come to mind, um, and you, you've said these words throughout our conversation here today, what, but one of the big ones um, is engagement, right? It's Absolutely. just increasing that engagement, and, and really, that's at the end of the day, that's what people are at an event for. Regardless of what type of event you're planning, they That's will true. have some sort of engagement, whatever, whatever that looks like for your particular niche or your particular event. Um, so I would definitely say that, you know, the, from, at least from my perspective, some of the key takeaways were, were definitely the benefits of having someone like, like Victoria come in and consult with you around event psychology um, and, you know, how to actually take your event from here to here not just Absolutely. for you as the event planner, but also if you have clients or you're working for a company, but more importantly for your event attendees, you want to have them leaving feeling like, oh my God, this was an amazing event. This was something different than what we've experienced in the past. That's true. Right? Yes. And, um, and also I would say um, the, the benefit of event psychology tools, um, another benefit is that uh, you actually can apply to various aspects of event planning mm -hmm. from, you know, communications and engagement that, that right. we, we were mentioned here to, you know, uh, to event technology. So you can apply that to, um, you know, improve the event tech adoption, for example, yeah. things like that. So to do the pre and post activities, uh, okay. pre and post event activities better. So things like that. And um, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, details and so many concepts that can be applied that, of course, you know, we cannot talk right now about. But yeah, um, they are very, <laughs> very applicable. And there are so many practical takeaways yeah. yes that because yeah, um, even on like like what you're saying is you know things can be applied on a micro or macro level um and even just making some micro changes could make a huge impact on someone's event it doesn't have to be like and redoing an event completely right no not at all yes it's yeah. it's those you're right it's those small changes you know like with one word yeah. that actually right. makes huge difference yeah Great. Amazing. Well, Victoria, first, like, th I want to thank you so much for being here and sharing this with us today, but where can people find out more about you? Yeah. Um, or if they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Sure. Thank you for having me um, uh, today. And yes, um, I can be found at, um, you know, my, my website is Events, And the Matey is spelled like yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, Events is my website and I'm also on Facebook, um, uh, and Twitter and, uh, Instagram, uh, and, um, and the handle is Matey Events. <laughs> and you can also find me on LinkedIn yeah. and I would be happy to connect and help you with, uh, your event awesome. and, uh, you know, consult about event psychology in particular. Okay, thank you so much. And for everyone watching, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions about this topic, um, then please, like I said, put your comments or your questions down below. We are always monitoring them and we'll get back to you. Um, but on that note, if you, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our, our site, head on over to eventplanningblueprint.com and you will get more updates like this video um, and many others that we have. So again, eventplanningblueprint.com and we will see you again next time on Event Planning Blueprint TV. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you.